Well, that's a very good question and, and one that's actually very interesting. Uh, I was fortunate enough to spend much of my graduate work specifically investigating the biochemical mechanisms of action of borates as pesticides and wood preservatives. So I'll be happy to try and have a stab at that for you. Uh, in solution, borates are always present as the uh, tetrahydroxy borate anion. And what that means is just that it has four hydroxyl groups and a negative charge. So it looks something like this. and then has a negative charge at the top of the structure. Now this particular uh, compound really likes to form chelate complexes with alcohol groups, especially alcohol groups where they're uh, cis adjacent in nature, and that just means two alcohol groups side by side. Good examples of that include mannitol and sorbitol, and that's the reason why we use those sugar alcohols when we do our borate analysis and our titrations. The best example, though, probably in nature, is the ribose sugar. And the ribose sugar is a pentose sugar with two adjacent hydroxyl groups. So it looks something like this. <coughs> um, and these two alcohol groups present on the ribose sugar are present in a cis-adjacent configuration. Now the interesting thing is where the borate interacts with this and you get an esterification reaction takes place. All that means is the alcohol groups react together um, and water is produced as a byproduct. So if we put water as a byproduct out here and then just delete our alcohol groups here and here, the resulting structure looks something like this. Now that chelate complex formation is very, very common uh, with the borates and is present in many chemical reactions. But in the cell, in uh, fungi or in insects, there's a specific ribose sugar that is present on uh, a molecule known as NAD or NADP. Now those molecules are nucleotide type compounds and the ribose sugar is next to a nicotinamide moiety. Now the interesting thing about the nicotinamide moiety is that it has a positive charge, a cationic charge, and that cationic charge can interact with the anionic charge that we've looked at up there. So you get a very good chelate complex and an electrostatic stabilization of the resulting structure. And the, uh, if I just draw, this isn't exactly what it looks like, but for the sake of convenience, if I just draw the um, nicotinamide group on here with a uh, nitrogen compound with a big positive charge, that positive charge and the negative charge kind of get together and balance up the whole chelate complex. Now here's the really interesting part. Those molecules, the NAD that I mentioned, this whole structure, is present in NAD, which stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, and it's also present in nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate. Those molecules are very important coenzymes within metabolism. They're used especially by dehydrogenase enzymes, and when the borate is complexed with those molecules, the dehydrogenase enzymes can no longer use the coenzymes. The substrate is basically removed from the enzyme and the enzyme can no longer work. Well those enzymes are very important in um, metabolic processes, especially within catabolism, which is the breakdown of sugars to produce energy in the cell. All life depends on these types of processes and if you block them then the cell can no longer produce energy and it can no longer live and grow and do the other things that cells need to do. Let me just show you very briefly the three, what I believe are the three most important uh, roles for that dehydrogenase enzyme. First of all, you have glycolysis, and I'll just, I'll just diagrammatically represent glycolysis as a straight line. Glycolysis is the breakdown of sugar, or glucose, into smaller units. So we start off here with glucose, and then we break it down 
um, to produce smaller units and the breakdown product, the final breakdown product, then feeds into the tricarboxylic acid cycle or sometimes called the Krebs cycle. This is a whole range of additional um, reactions, chemical reactions, which are governed by enzymes within the cell. The resulting uh, energy, if you like, or ATP molecules that are produced from these reactions then feed into the electron transport chain. And I'll just diagrammatically represent as a straight line in that direction. The electron transport chain is what's responsible for carrying the reducing power from the result of these reactions and feeding that onto the terminal electron acceptor, which is oxygen. And this whole reaction is the reason why we breathe oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is the breakdown product of the sugar up here and the, uh, the power or the energy within these molecules is taken through and reacted with, with oxygen at the end here to produce water. So I'll just put water in over here. Now, every single step throughout these reactions are governed by dehydrogenase enzymes. So we have dehydrogenase enzymes in the glycolytic pathway, and we have dehydrogenase enzymes within the tricarboxylic acid pathway. We also have a secondary uh, metabolic route called the um, pentose phosphate pathway. And the pentose phosphate pathway basically just comes off on the side here and is an alternate route. But that alternate route also has two dehydrogenase enzymes that are very important uh, in that um, uh, enzyme catalyzed reaction uh, pathway. Each one of these steps that I've marked here is reliant on NAD uh, for these reactions to take place. And then the two uh, compounds over here on the pentose phosphate pathway are the NADP molecules. And we can see that basically every single one of these steps is blocked by the presence of borate. So the chemical reactions in the cell stop, no energy is produced in the cell, and the cell fundamentally starves to death and dies.